Welcome everyone. It's been a while today. I wanted to address one of the questions that I get qu asked quite a lot. How do I connect my WPF app to the identity server? Now I'm not a WPF developer, but I do know how to connect an OIDC client is essentially, it doesn't matter what application you have. It needs to be an OIDC client. And uh, I'm a little bit disappointed that I couldn't get this through some people's head or um, couldn't provide interesting enough material for them to absor absorb it well enough. So uh, there, I'm going to release a few videos that uh, will essentially hopefully just provide more examples, which I'm going to do in a format where you can basically take this format and apply it to a different client. And I'm basically going to do the same format. And I'm going to apply it to different clients, right? So today we're going to connect the WPF client to our identity server. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So first thing, let's go ahead into DuckDuckGo, right? And you type in WPF OIDC client, right? And then you look through the links. You want to try to find something you're looking for. And then you're like, oh, that looks uh, interesting right there. What is that? Hmm, identity model OIDC client samples. Very nice. Okay, so... Uh, WPF web. I mean, it has WPF in the name, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Okay, so where does the logic usually sit in a CS file? The right C sharp code, so logic sits in the CS file. Okay, um, it doesn't seem like there is anything here. Uh, okay, oh, so there's some code here. Okay, so I'll probably need a WPF um, application. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Okay, so this does look like a, what was the version there I can see before? 0.7.2. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a new project. Uh, we're gonna type in WPF.NET Framework. And let's just do WPF app. Okay, uh, yep, go ahead, create. Okay, so to me, this already looks like a complete mess. I don't know what I'm looking at. So slowly, I have the WPF here, references, dependencies, app XAML, app CS. Okay, so that was the similar file that I've seen here. So what I want to do is maybe put some logic into this file right here. It's main window that they have here as well. Okay, um, let's go ahead and copy everything, right? So private OIDC client, let's go ahead and put it here. Uh, OIDC client, install Thinkture identity model. Uh, is that the package that we want? We can check by using by looking at the using namespaces. So it looks like it's identity model OIDC client. So let's go ahead, copy this name. And what we're going to do is add manage nuket packages. OIDC client, oh, okay. So the primary goal here is to get an OIDC client into your app because usually somebody would have already written an OIDC library to connect to an OIDC provider, right? So your identity server is an OIDC provider. Okay, so we can import the using statement. Nice. And usually people have a question like, it's a native application, I, I'm not in a browser, what do I do? Like if you're, if you're on a computer or, on, or a mobile phone, you have a browser access, there is such thing as web view, so you still go through the browser. Always go through the browser. Anybody who's asking me how do I authenticate through the API, you don't always go through the browser, okay? So, uh, this function, somehow I got a trick. I know a few things about XAML. I'm going to take some out of my pocket right now. Uh, let's go ahead, grab a button, All right? Okay, nice. Button. So you, you know you put a button, double click, and you get a little event thing here, right? So that's cool. Let's go ahead and grab all these options. I already see some OIDC configuration options there, so and they look nice, right? This is something familiar. This is something that we configured on our MVC client, and this is something that we've configured on our JavaScript client as well, right? And we know what the scopes are. Open ID profile. We I know we removed that scope. Uh, client ID. I will need. I will actually just say WPF here. For the authority, 
we can actually go into our MVC client here, into startup, and take a look at the authority. Right, we can just copy this because hopefully the authority haven't hasn't changed. Uh, let's go ahead and replace the authority here. And the redirect URI, this is going to be if anything I know about web views is essentially a browser embedded in your application, right? Uh, this is basically going to be the address of the web view where we're going to be coming back to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just replace this with a local host and I'm going to keep it the same. And you're going to see where I put it in just a second. Uh, let's go ahead and figure out some other errors in here. For example, we don't have this message. I guess this is something that they display on the UI. Let's go ahead, comment these out. Uh, next thing is await. So I need to make this asynchronous. Okay. And then this WPF embedded browser. So this is something they have here as well. So we, we can go ahead and copy this. You can always go a step through the code one by one and find out what it is. Um, I'm not that bothered because for me, this is just an example. Uh, some people have problem Googling stuff. So uh, I guess I'm just going to basically go. I, I'm doing what I would basically do if I was in the place where like, right, I don't know what's, what's going on. So uh, I created a new class, WPF Embedded Browser, right? Replace it. Don't forget to fix the namespace, WPF App. And make sure everything is in here. So uh, this seems all right. I'm not going to touch it because it seems like it's not part of that. This seems to take care of itself, whatever it's doing. Uh, if errors arise, that's when we go fix them. So uh, this app seems to work. We can go ahead and try and build. If there are any build errors, we fix them. If it builds now, it seems to be towards a completed. Um, towards the completed. Everything builds. Okay. So now we have to configure the identity server to actually have this. So first of all, I want to go ahead and check if I still have my database stuff. I do. I don't want to mess with the database because I'm lazy today. And we'll uncomment all this stuff that I load from configuration. I'm going to go to the configuration and I'm going to add a client. Okay, this is just another client. Uh, that semicolon seems off. Let's go ahead and fix it. I'll grab the JS client. I'll paste it. Right. Uh, client ID. Uh, so I have a couple, quite a few tabs open. It's very hard to think when you have a lot of tabs open. You forget what they are anyway, so close them. And, and then you open stuff up again. Needed, right? So client ID, we put WPF here. So we're going to go ahead and put this here. We're going to keep this as code because for native applications, as I explained in my previous videos, you want to use code and P Pixie flow. All right, so require Pixie. Yep, require client secret. No, we do not require client secret because it's a native application. Native applications can be reverse engineered. Your secret is not a secret on if it's a native client, All right? A native client means it goes on a different user agent and a different user agent means the phone. It's not a different user agent if it's in the, in the VM in the cloud and uh, nobody can reach the hardware bit, right? And that's when you can have a secret. So uh, redirect URIs. So this is where we redirect to the client, right? This is our client, and this is where we specify the redirect URI. Okay. Uh, they already kind of provided us with one, so let's just put it here. Uh, one thing uh, is I will just put localhost as course origin allowed, and logout URI, I'll just remove that because that's something that you can get to as long as you've understood the previous tutorials, and uh, if you can think logically, you will be able to get there. Otherwise, if you are struggling to implement that logic log logout functionality, uh, you should learn more about programming rather than go into building authentication providers, right? So uh, let's also request API one, and we're gonna remove the access token lifetime because we don't need it. Uh, then allow access tokens via browser true, right? We're gonna be opening a web view. It's a browser injected in the application. We're going to be opening that. So yes, we need this require consent false. We don't need consent regarding what information we put in the token. This is just a screen that's going to be displayed on the identity server side. We don't want that. Right. So a uh, minimalistic setup. I think that's done. Uh, let's go ahead and figure out where are we actually going to see that? How do we confirm that we actually get the result, right? Uh, so we set up some options, we pass them into the OADC client and 
here we log in and we put it into this result. So if this breaks, we return. Uh, and then we have the result if it's errored. Okay, so right about here, if it breaks, something has er gone terribly wrong. So after this, this is where I want my breakpoint. Uh, one thing I've just remembered actually as well, if I go not into startup, into program, if I had the database enabled, I will essentially have this seeding here as well, which I don't want. It will probably crash the, the application, right? Okay, uh, so at this point, you might scratch your head and you're like, uh, am I forgetting anything else? Or, I don't know. Uh, let's go ahead and um, just launch it, right? Uh, what 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 are we gonna be launching? Let's go ahead and just launch the identity server and the WPF app. So WPF app uh, start. Uh, what do we? What is this API? We don't want the API. Identity server start. Okay, nice. So here we are. Uh, let's go. So here we have the identity server and here we have WPF app. Let's press the button and see what happens. Okay, so here you can see our very familiar screen and uh, the login is if I check the program CS where we do the seed, Bob password. All right, so Bob password and then we go sign in. Okay, here we ha hit the breakpoint so we can take a look at the result and we have the access token. Okay, so the next thing to check can we hit the API, right? So just to double check, yes, we are requesting scope to API one. So that's the thing that I want to add to startup. So API one, start, apply, okay. And I guess I'm doing this somewhere here where I'm calling it. Yep, get a sync secret. Uh, eh. I'll, I'll I'll just grab this. I'll I'll think of the client on the like I'll make up the client on the spot again. Close everything because it gets confusing if you have to put stuff open. Recover there. Okay, so username right here. I'll put the new breakpoint right here, and this just means I can get the username. Let's go ahead and put the create a new client here. So var client equals new HTTP client. Okay. Uh, and grab the access token from the result uh, as I remember so default request headers authorization equals a new authorization header value instead of having the namespace imported like this and schema is bearer and the value will grab from the result and access token by the way don't uh, don't ask me how to store this in the global state somewhere here. I don't know how to do it in WPF app. If you're a WPF uh, developer, you should learn how to use Google to find solutions to your problems, okay? Uh, because at this point, if you ask me how to do WPF development, that's exactly where I'm gonna, I'm just gonna Google the solution, right? So uh, we set up an HTTP client, we add the access token to our header. Let's go ahead get string async, all right, so this is just going to be the result. We will await on this. So uh, result, we already have results. So let's say that this is an API result. Remember how to type? Okay, I think that's it we have set it to launch yeah let's go if we get any errors we can google the error we can see what it happens or we can ask what the error is in the comments right hopefully a good soul will help us all right we're just finishing for this to load and then we can click the button here we are so bob password sign in okay so the name name is no uh not sure why it would be no what kind of identity does it make ah, i don't know i'm more interested about the access token right so we would attach that to the header and here we are api result secret message from api one okay so we get past the authorization and this is pretty much it right uh not much i literally your steps are if 
you have some kind of new uh, native library technology that allows you to build super fast like Flutter. I'll, I'll also com cover Xamarin and Flutter, by the way, for those people who keep asking. Um, you basically, you, you just grab your technology stack, put the technology stack in Google, and then you Google technology stack, YDC client, stuff comes up, there's going to be a bunch of stuff, there's going to be like five, maybe ten, a hundred options, you try all of them, right? You see what works, you see what's up to date, what are people using, uh, do your research, uh, don't be lazy, uh, this stuff is hard, and you got to put, put in the work, okay? Uh, if you are still, if you still feel like you're in the dark, do more research and try to understand it more. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully this can give you a sort of an idea of at least how you can re uh, like reason about the stuff that you don't know that I haven't covered. Google, read, research, stuff that confuses you, any terminology, read. Uh, not rocket science. But yeah, this will be it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. You can also ask them on my Discord server. I do stream live these days, so... Uh, on Wednesdays and Sundays, uh, you might want to join for that if you're interested. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe, and hopefully, I'll see you in my other videos.